Hey folks, Crazy Clamor 80 here again, and we're going to look at another game show review, and this is of the classic Crosswits. This ran uh, from 75 to 80 and from 86 to 87. And let's look at some information about the show. The syndicated uh, versions were from December 15, 1975 to September 12, 1980, and from... Uh, September 8, 1986 to September of 87. There were reruns from uh, mid-1987 on. The host of the 70s version to, to 80 version was Jack Clark, and the later host was David Sparks. The model for the 75 to 80 version was Jerry Fiala, and it was a Ralph Edwards production. The announcers were John Harlan, Jay Stewart, and Jerry Bishop for the 75 to 80 version, and Michelle Roth for the 86 to 87 version. Distributors were Metro Media and ABR Entertainment. It was filmed at Metro Media Studios in Los Angeles, California, from 75 to 80, and CBS TV Studios in Los Angeles, California, from 86 to 87. Other production companies were Crossed Wits Productions and Outlet Communications Incorporation, or uh, Incorporated. And let's start by looking at the 75 to 80 version with Jack Clark. From Hollywood, it's the Crosswits with number two down, Robert Reed. Number one across, Patricia McCormick. And number six across, Anita Gillette. And now, let's meet the people of the Crosswits, Jack Clark. Good to be with you. Thank you for dropping by. And uh, stars, you're looking good. Uh, Patty and Daryl and Anita and Robert ready to go to work. You need some captains, I would think. Mm -hmm. Jerry, who are they? Well, Jack, for Anita and Robert, your team captain is a student working towards a career as a computer programmer. She has a smile and won't quit. She's the lovely Rochelle Love. Patricia and Daryl, your team captain, is a student who wants to work with figures, as an accountant, of course. From San Pedro, California, welcome John Cracciolo. You 
Rochelle Love, uh, what a lovely name, John Cracciolo. Well, good luck, John and Rochelle. I know you're going to do well. We are going to do crossword puzzles here on the Crosswits, uh, points and prizes. All the words that go up in the puzzle are clues to the identity of a mystery subject. Each a letter is worth 10 points, uh, 100 points if you solve the puzzle. And a special for John and Rochelle, if you should rack up 1,000 points or more playing today, you get $1,000 in cold, hard cash. You ready for that? Well, here's a quick rundown on how to play. There were two teams, and they can, each team consisted of two celebrities and one civilian captain. Uh, they competed. A coin toss backstage would decide who the starting team was, who would play first. The captain chooses the line on the crossword puzzle and the celebrity to answer as well. And that celebrity would answer a clue from Jack Clark, the host and they would be given seven seconds. The celebrities would just switch back and forth until one missed. Then the captain would get a chance. If all of them missed, then control would go to the other team. The words were all tied to a topic, which could be solved at any time and would win that team a game. There were 10 points given per letter and 100 points given for a puzzle solved. There was $1,000 given if a team would uh, reach 1,000 points during a game. There would be a new car given away if the uh, second puzzle was solved with just one clue. And uh, play would go on until a bell sounded to end the main game. And then the bonus game called the crossfire would be played by the winning team or the team that led at the end of the game. Okay, lots at stake. John, you won the toss. The subject of our first puzzle is a crowd pleaser. Let's go to work on it. Okay, I'd like one across with uh, Daryl Anderson, please. Daryl, it's a seven-letter word for you. The time when former President Nixon was best described as number two and definitely trying harder. Uh, he was the vice president the in the time. Fifth, the, yeah. the time, the 50s. The, the 50s. 50s, good for you, yeah, the 50s, that's right. Seven letters at 10 points, 70 points. Patricia's up for you, John. Okay, one down, please. Here it comes, five-letter word for you, Patricia, has an F at the beginning. Uh, former President Nixon, funny we should say, is probably among the countless folks who think Watergate jokes are no longer what? <laughs> funny. That's right. <laughs> To 120 and to Daryl. Okay, let's try two across. Nine letter word for you, Daryl. Uh, has an N at the beginning. Every time he hears the Marine Band play Hail to the Chief, uh, former President Nixon <laughs> probably <laughs> feels a bit of this for his old job. Nostalgia. Yes, indeed. Yes. <laughs> <your heart>, <laughs> Okay, three down, please. Patricia, it's a six-letter word, has an S at the beginning. Uh, Britain's David oh. Frost spent many hours with former President Nixon <laughs> in, <laughs> in, order, in order to produce one. David uh, Frost spent many hours with former President Nixon in order to produce one. A scoop a story uh, to produce a scandal. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, to produce... Uh, what do you think, John? Shows? Good answer, but wrong. All right, Rochelle, you've been patient, and you're over there now. Okay, I'm trusting Robert. Three down. Oh, uh, yeah, we encourage our stars to tell you what they think they know, and that you work as a team that way. Three down is a six-letter word. i uh, put you right on the spot, Bob. <laughs> uh, Britain's David Frost spent many hours with uh, former President Nixon in order to produce one. Series. Yes. Oh. Now you've got the 60. Anita's up, Rochelle. Okay, Boy. four across. That's the only one we got left up there. R at the beginning of six, Anita. Yes. Uh, we seriously wonder if, uh, when he was a kid, former President Nixon <laughs> <laughs> ever heard all the other kids call him this name. We doubt. Richard. No. Ricky. 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 Rick. You have a form of it, honey. Just... Uh, a form of Rick. Yeah. yeah. We, Rick. we doubt if they called him. Uh, Richard. Yes, just in time. Oh. Richard. <laughs> Richard. All the information we can possibly give you, Rochelle. Talk it over with Anita and Robert. Tell us the crowd pleaser we're after.
Bride, Rochelle, your answer, please. I hope it's Happy Days. You are right. It is Happy Days. Well, this uh, started out to be kind of lopsided, but look what happened. 220 to 210. Let's see, uh, uh, a series about the 50s, nostalgia, and Richie the lead, and it is certainly funny. Well done, Rochelle. Here's your prize for that. Rochelle is a gem electronic organ, a beautifully styled musical instrument which offers many easy-to-play features that your whole family will enjoy. Gem organs are furnished by General Electric Music Incorporated. Nice job, Rochelle. Those are the breaks. Uh, John and Rochelle each put about the equal number of uh, pieces of information up on the puzzle, but Rochelle solved it, and that means that you get to go at our next puzzle, which is for the automobile. So you'll get first crack at it, Rochelle. Stand by for two minutes. You do the same. <laughs> and what does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. That's gas. No, our next puzzle is our car puzzle. Now, this subject will stay a mystery, as you know, because there's so much at stake, and uh, since you solved the first one, Rochelle, Michelle, you get the first crack at it, so let's get going. Okay, I'll try four across with Anita Gillette. Anita, yes. six letters. When the hungry customer bought a chicken one from the colonel, he said, thanks for the mammary. Breast. <laughs> That's right. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> And that is the first oh. word up there, Rochelle. It, uh, Plastic I don't know what that makes you think. <laughs> I know. And yeah, I, know. Kind of show is I have no idea what may <laughs> go through your mind with that clue, but it could lead you to a car. Could lose your turn. Okay, I'm going to take a guess. Okay, now you have to do this by yourself, but we're on your side, so we're going to cross our fingers and think good thoughts, Rochelle. You study that clue, rest for five seconds. <laughs> I don't mind if I do. <laughs> Okay. Your answer, Rochelle. Dolly Parton. <laughs> yeah. I would have bet you a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. We, we ought to give you a ride around the block in a new car just uh, just for the effort there. No, that's not, that's not what we were after. But well, in a manner of speaking, that well, no, you know that's not the answer, Daryl. It's a six-letter word. Aha! Has an N next to the N here, Daryl. You ready for this? Okay. Uh -oh. How <laughs> humiliating. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you were as heavily in debt as I am, you'd do this too. <laughs> All right. What kind of chicken is it's this? A spring chicken. A spring chicken. <laughs> Now, uh, continuing this madness. Okay, one day. <laughs> I just saw that. Uh, all right. Jack, I'd like to call a conference, please. You're entitled to do that, John. Take seven seconds. A classic. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens, John. Singing in the rain. You're a good player. That's right. Isn't that incredible? Those three clues, the umbrella, the musical from MGM, and what a classic that is, certainly, too. Uh, four across uh, O'Connor, uh, and uh, five across Kelly, and three down Reynolds, all the stars, Gene Kelly, Donald O'Connor, Debbie Reynolds, in that movie, and uh, Gene Kelly's great rendition of that title song, oh, Singing yeah. in the Rain. Beautiful. And five, Anita, what? what nuts? I beg your pardon? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Hazelnuts. No, what nuts? Great nuts. You're talking, you really mean you say nuts, some kind of nuts, Brazil nuts, uh, walnuts, uh, pecans, uh, uh, butternuts, uh, uh, cashews. All good answers, but not what we're after. You need some letters up nuts. there, apparently. John, up to you. Did Robert's up for you. Two down. Seven-letter word for you, uh, Bob. Uh, it's, uh, uh, this is what inspires an often-seen white-haired southern octogenarian epicure to insert his manual digits into his oral orifice. <laughs> or... Yes. Wait, what did you say? Chicken. Yes. Chicken is exactly right, and that is 70 points for you. Yes. 
What did you say? All right. Now, wait a minute. The time is gone, but the game is a long way from being over. You just put that word up there. It's not a lot to go with. We are looking for a thing. You have the advantage of that other clue, if that helps you, Rochelle. Take seven seconds. If you can solve it, you win the day. Otherwise, John wins it. So good luck. Seven seconds looking for a thing. Anita, Bob, and Rochelle. Okay, what do you think that is? It's for the game, Rochelle, a thing. Colonel Sanders, I know. Well, I'll tell you, with all you had to go with, that's, that's as good an answer as any. It's the wrong answer, though. John, you stood there, and it happened to you. You won the day. Congratulations to you. No, it isn't. Uh, it, see, without another five, let me, let me give you this. Five down was organ with the O, chopped nuts. Chopped. Oh. Chopped chicken. Liver. Livers. Liver. Liver is what we're after. Three across meat, six across pate, um, one down calves, two down wrong. organs. Cacciola almost had it stolen away from you there, but I uh, see you've got the watches so far, right. and now it's crossfire. You've got 60 seconds to put 10 words up there, win yourself a vacation trip. And you get some help, for heaven's sakes. Whom will it be? Well, they played so well, both of the both of them. I, did, but yeah. I like Daryl on the Lou Grand show, so I'd like to go with Daryl Anderson. Okay, come on down. <laughs> He's good. I'm right. Okay, uh, you're a good team. Uh, he'll help you all he can. You're in charge, though, there, Big John, so uh, we'll start that clock on you as soon as you have to hear first word. Good luck. Okay, thank you. One across. You try for them in football. Touchdown. Uh, yes. One down. Uh, a hobo. Uh, trap. Yes. Uh, five across. Uh, dry, desert-like. Arid. Yes. Uh, two down. What a cow chews. Side. Yes. Three down. A tree. Uh, oh. oh, yes. Four down. To yell. Shout. Tree. Yes. Uh, A down. All right, an East Coast team. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, East, Steelers. Um, East Coast team. Uh, Giants. Um, six across. Six across. A measure of weight. Kilo. Yes. Okay, seven down. All right, Benjamin Franklin had one. Uh, spectacles, uh, inventor, um, Benjamin keys, Franklin. Um, kite. Kite. A man across. Uh, it's used to prevent bleeding. Uh, yes. Okay, eight down. An East Coast team. Jets. Yes! Oh! All right, Daryl. Way to go, and 13 whole seconds left on the clock for you. You are doing great. How great did he do, Jerry? Well, Jack, here's how great John did. Spacious, roomy luggage by American Tourists is yours, John. Designed to go everywhere by land, sea, or air. One-piece molded construction, non-spring locks, foam rubber padded handles. Strong, lightweight luggage by American Tourister. And, John, you can use your luggage on your trip for two to Jamaica. Universal Flight to Montego Bay, Jamaica for an eight-day holiday. Many exciting activities and place to see on this Club Universe holiday. John, congratulations to you. You did it. The watches, the luggage, and uh, vacation in Jamaica. Good luck. Enjoyed it, John. Hope you did. It's been fun. Great. Got to it with that, with all those nice prizes. <laughs> Let's see. I wonder how the guys and the gals would do. Well, that's uh, Anita and Patricia next time out against the mean guys, uh, Robert and Daryl. All right. Jerry Fiala, Jack Clark, be with us, won't you? Bye-bye, friends. This is Jerry Bishop speaking. The Crosswits is a Ralph Edwards production. Well, that was my look at the 75 to 80 version of The Crosswits. And uh, I got to say, I, I like Jack Clark. He was great. Didn't do that many hosting, actual hosting jobs. He was more of an announcer, uh, perhaps best known for uh, Wheel of Fortune in those duties. For hosting duties, he was best known probably for The Crosswits. Um, I liked him a lot. He was great. Um uh, this show was pretty good. I remember it back in the day. Uh, I think it aired late at night, like 7 o'clock or something. Uh, it was a good show. But uh, now we're going to have us a look at the 1986 to 87 version of Crosswits. Uh, 
I think initially known as the new Crosswits. It's the first word in television game shows, the all new Thank you very, very much. Of course, you know it's lovely to be here at Crosswitz. We have some wonderful stars to work with today. We have Joanna Kearns and Eileen Graff. We have Charles Shaughnessy and Rosie O'Donnell. We'll catch up with you folks in just a minute. You'll be given clues to words in a crossword puzzle, all of which add up to a person, place, or thing. Answering the clues correctly gives you control of the game, and the letters in these answers are worth points. Stars can help with the crossword answers, but only the contestant can solve the puzzle for bonus points. Thank you, Michelle. Let us see our first puzzle, please. You can see that it is a person, stars, contestants that we are looking for, not necessarily a proper name. Now, Maura, you won the flip backstage. It was a cross-continental flip. And uh, we're going to start with you and Joanna. Thank you. Uh, one across, please. Yes, ma'am. No matter how childishly he acts, he's still mature. Uh, 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 a grown-up? Uh, 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 oh, child, he, he's still an adult. He's still a, a grown-up. He's still a, a... I always like to remind contestants and the stars on the show that uh, we write our clues very cleverly. So there are always hidden, deep hidden meanings, etc., etc. But that's not what we were looking for, Maura. Uh, this is a wild guess. Victor? Yes! Oh, thank God. Sure, Victor Mature. Nice wow. job. It wasn't that wild. It was uh, very, very accurate. Good job. My mind was. Pick a word for Eileen. Uh, I'd like to try two down, please. Okay. On the TV show Get Smart, what did Maxwell call his boss, Eileen? Oh, his boss. Uh, that wasn't it. Uh, Chief? Yes. Chief. If that has you confused, you can solve the puzzle. <laughs> or you can go to Eileen and go for six across. I'd like to try six across, please. Same clue, Eileen. <laughs> Take it away, Eileen. The only thing I can think of is maybe corn? I don't know. I have no idea. If you only knew how I'd love to say yes. I, I still am dumbfounded. I have no idea. All right. Then it's back to Guy. Solve the puzzle? Um, no, I'm going to try for six across, across again. One more chance. Charles, six across. I think you're the only person who has not had a crack at this. This is where Eaton and Cambridge come. Sailors often dance the what pipe? The horn pipe. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> horn pipe. Nicely done. Solve the puzzle. Guy. Oh. <laughs> Mora solve the puzzle. <gasps> I, 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 I'm going to say General Custer. I, I who don't was the, uh, who was the victor at Little Bighorn? I can't remember. I know who it is, and I can't remember. Huh? Sitting, Sitting Bull. Bull. Somebody Sitting in the Bull. audience. Nice. Sitting Bull Sitting is the answer Bull. that we were looking for. Take a look at the puzzle. Chief, Little Bighorn. Of course, Sitting Bull. It all adds up to uh, the great Indian chief. And so right now, the score is 115 points for Mora. Guy, you have 35 points, so we've got a pretty good game going. Do a little thinking, and we will be back after this commercial timeout. Blank. He cute. What is too cute? John Q. Blank. Public. Yes. Oh. I would like to try to solve the puzzle. If you solve the puzzle at this point, you will win the entire deal. If you do not solve the puzzle, we will go over to Guy, who is anxiously waiting his opportunity with a smile, and he will win the entire deal. With that as a little bit of legal wrap-up, Solve the puzzle, Maura. Is it James Cagney? You dirty rat. Yes, it is. Very good. Take a look at the puzzle. And Yankee Doodle. 
Uh, of course, uh, you dirty rat. I didn't mean that to you, Maura. I was just doing my uh, lousy James Cagney uh, impression. <laughs> but all of those things add up to James Cagney, and that was very, very well done. Thank all you. right, now, over to Guy. You said at the beginning of the show that you were in television uh, training. Yes. And that you were uh, interested in uh, being considered for the job. From my point of view, of course, <laughs> I would like to see you not get my job, but you are a very, uh, very uh, articulate and sharp young man, and we've enjoyed having you well, on the show. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed myself. Thank you. We are not sending you home alone or without a uh, gift. We have a recliner for you, and we have a trash compactor. I don't know what that says, but... Uh, I'm sure that you will enjoy both of those items. Guys, sure thanks will. for being on the show. Really. Thank you. It fun to have. Maura, if there was anything in the world that you wanted to do, I know it was to come on to Crosswoods <laughs> and to win. And yes. uh, just as you wished for all your life prior to your marriage, you have won. Now, <laughs> we got to be thinking about a star to take into the Crossfire round yes. because you know what you're about to do. Yes, I do. Win a honeymoon. Oh, I hope And so. go for a shot Is at the car. Isn't that, isn't that correct? Five, five yeah. Weeks okay, from today. so you're. You're, you're, you're playing for a honeymoon, and uh, we yes. want you to do the very best that you can. Think about which star you're going into the crossfire round. While you're thinking, we'll do a little bit of business. We'll be right back. Not through with you yet, because if you win, you're also going to get a shot at a beautiful brand new car. Michelle. David, it could be the Ford Taurus L Wagon featuring automatic transmission, 2.5 liter central injection engine, power steering, and other features furnished by City Ford. If you win the crossfire round and the car, you could win over $16,000 in prizes. Uh, okay. okay. All right. What a way to get going. Now, Maura, very quickly, you have 10 words up there. All you have to do is get them within 60 seconds, and you're going to be on your way. So, good luck to you, Eileen. Good luck to you. Get me started by calling out a word. One across, please. Something like a spice that flavors food. Seasoning. Seasoning. Yes. Seasoning. Two down, please. An English nobleman. Earl. Yes. Four across, please. A nocturnal bird. Owl. Yep. Thank you. Three down, please. Tidy. Neat. Neat. Yes. Five across, please. To pull. Tug. Yes. Eight down, please. Top of the mountain. Peak. Yes. Seven down, please. Domesticated. Tame. Yes. Nine across, please. To charge with a crime. Accused. Yes. Ten across, please. He robbed and plundered at sea. Uh, uh, pirate. pirate. Uh, six pirates. Yes. Six down, please. To jump. Uh, leap. Yes. <laughs> You are, you are brilliant. I didn't know how bright brilliant. you were. I mean, Crosswitz is my life. You're brilliant. <laughs> Crosswitz is my life. You're brilliant. Absolutely wonderful. It. Very good. Both of you did a terrific job. I'm proud of you both. Uh, hey, we're not through. You're on your way to Hong Kong. You won yourself a honeymoon. I can't do us a favor it. here at Crosswitz and win a car, oh, would you? I'll do my best. As you know, during the commercial break, each of, uh, each of our stars have a box given to them by you, and they have the names of the cars. Which of the cars do you want? The, uh, the Taurus, the Fiero, or the Blazer? Uh, I'm going to try for the Taurus. Who has the Taurus? One of our stars. Is it Charles, Rosie, or is it Joanna? I'm going to try Joanna. Joanna, open up that uh, blue Ooh. box and maybe there's a Taurus in there. What a, good, what a good show this is. Isn't this terrific? Congratulations. Eileen, you did a beautiful job. Stars, thank you so much. We enjoyed having you on the show. This is a great show, I gotta I tell you. Maury, you did great. Oh I'm David Sparks. God. Goodbye. Oh. Well, that was my look at the 1986-87 version of The Crosswits, also known as the all-new Crosswits. I did not really care for it. Uh, I didn't think David Sparks was that great a host. I didn't like the theme. Um, just generally the look of the show I didn't really care for. I greatly preferred the uh, 75 to 80 version of Crosswits. Uh, actually, I think uh, that version was called The Crosswits. Uh, and Jack Clark was certainly a better host, even though sometimes uh, the, the questions were kind of stupid or the clues were kind of stupid. But uh, that was my version of or my uh, tribute to The Crosswits. Uh, ran from 1975 to 1980 and 1986 to 87 on syndicated networks. But uh, there was also a bunch of international versions that ran a lot longer than the American versions. But this is Crazy Climber Ace, and thanks for watching The Crosswits, or my tribute to The Crosswits. 
Hope you have a great week, and I will see you soon with another video. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.